What's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So it's the morning after the disaster, after the catastrophe and the dust has settled. And I thought it would make sense, you know, it was appropriate for me to do um, just like a, a final thought and review where I expand upon uh, my thoughts on the showcase and, and the actual games that were shown because, you know, you got to see my initial reaction. Um, you know, while watching it, and then you got to see, you know, what we said about it in the podcast. But I need to, like, you know, expand on, on my um, my own thoughts a little bit more comprehensively and thoroughly. Please understand that showcase was complete garbage. Still, that you know, sleep hasn't changed that. I still think that showcase was garbage from a PlayStation first party standpoint, and that's what when you call it a showcase. First party is supposed to be the star, right? They're supposed to be the main attraction. So that's why, in my opinion, it was terrible. If this was a third party showcase, which sometimes they advertise things as a, show, uh, as a third party showcase to like show off games from their partners, oh, then this show is much better. Much better. Like, let me see, off the top of my head, if this was a third party showcase, I would probably give this maybe a, a, a six or, or maybe even a seven. But from a PlayStation showcase, which is supposed to focus on PlayStation, things made and developed by PlayStation, oh yeah, it was easily a two or a three. And some people don't seem to get that. I think out of all out of an hour, we saw one. If I'm and I'll go through it again because maybe I'm forgetting something. But we saw gameplay from one first party studio, and that was Insomniac. The two other from first party, it was just CG trailers. So no actual gameplay. And we saw Spider-Man and we first uh, Spider -Man, Spider man was first announced with that CG trailer two years ago. So it's like from a PlayStation perspective, this was horrible, horrible. And I don't know how anybody could like put it any put it any other way, because that's what when I watch a PlayStation showcase, I'm here to see PlayStation stuff. Assassin's Creed, I can see that at, at Ubisoft forward in a month. All these other third party games. They, they're, some of them are going to have showcases. Some of them are just going to put it up on YouTube anyway. I'm here to see what PlayStation has to show because it's their showcase. So all this third-party stuff I was going to hear about anyway, yeah, I don't give you, I don't give you real any. Third-party is, is a compliment. It's complimentary. It shouldn't be the main thing at, at a PlayStation showcase. So... Do I do I give like a showcase some, you know, some small points here and there for what they what they show third party? Sure. Some small points. But the major points come from first party. And if you barely show any first party, I'm not even going to give you the, the points that you that you, you should get for, sh for showing any third party content. I'm not even going to give you points for that. So that's where I end up at like a, a, a two, three or three point five. but. <laughs> Some people judge showcases strictly not on that criteria. Some people just judge it strictly off of what they show, whether it's first party or third party, indie or not. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. It's, it's first party. Those are my standards. Th that's my criteria. But um, I want to get into, like I said, some of, some of the games that were actually, actually shown. And I think this is in chronological order. I got a few... Um, few windows open. Um, so Fair Game is the studio. Um, Fair Game is the game made by Haven Studio, uh, led by Jade Raymond. So PlayStation acquired Haven Studio because they were so impressed by the progress of the game and what the game was. And so this is described as a uh, as almost like a like a payday type game, I believe. I think that's the description of it. Uh, let me see. Uh, so Fair Game is a PvPVE heist game where players compete to steal from the rich. So it's coming to PS5 and, PS and PC. Something similar to Payday. <sighs> what for, so first, it's a CG trailer, so I have really no feelings of it. Because even though I, I would say I guess this is a pretty good... CG, tr as far, 
as far as you can describe CG trailers. It's good at, as far as it describing what you're going to do in the game, but I still hate CG trailers because it doesn't matter how how good you really describe it. If 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 I don't see gameplay, I don't know how it's going to play. So I don't know if I'm even going to be interested. But if you but if you tell me just off of a PvP VE um, payday heist type game, no, I'm not excited because I was never interested in payday. So if this game, I am interested in the PvP aspect of it, but the heist part, no. And I, I just, I'm, I'm very curious. Is like, okay, what could, what, what did PlayStation see in this that they were making that they were like, oh, we gotta, we gotta purchase them immediately, like right now, because I, I it, like I said, it's hard to tell based off of a CG trailer, CGI trailer, but it's hard to see the, the, the what what they see or the potential or you know the the promise that they see of what this could be i just yeah i just don't get it i don't know um we'll see when we see gameplay but yeah as of right now it it means absolutely nothing to me like showing me that cg trailer was the same thing as not announcing anything to me at all um hell divers we got to see some you know hell divers gameplay um the the first hell divers was was a good game um but i i really don't have much to say about it i mean i'm not about to like force out any thoughts on these games if i really don't have any like hell i'm sure hell divers is going to be good uh, i thought the first hell divers was good but I, am i like super hyped for hell divers too no it was, but it's something i'll pick up when it comes out um immortals of avium um so this is one of the ea original titles i do think this game actually looks good uh i think i think it it has potential i think it'll actually turn out good like i said i think it it does remind me of like a a magical bioshock or like almost like ghostwire type thing um so the gameplay to me actually looks good it comes out on july i'm very wary about games that come out in uh, you know um in july i think july games a lot of times are just throwaways uh but sometimes it's it's a month for games where you don't want to compete with anybody else it's, it could be a good month for that for sleepers um so but it's made by like kind of like a new studio so i don't have the utmost faith in it but i do think these trailers look good um okay ghost runner um i was a fan of the first ghost runner um so they seem to be expanding the, the game the gameplay and, and the mechanics uh with ghost runner 2 and this is coming out uh this year they say so um that's that's cool um so yeah, uh, I look forward to Ghost Runner two also. Uh, Phantom Blade Zero. So, <coughs> excuse me. So Fla Phantom Blade Zero uh, from Cruel Man Studios. So I don't know much about the studio. I think it's a is it a Chinese studio? It might be, and there might there might be a new Chinese studio. We've been seeing a rise of like st uh, studios out out of China. Um, I could honestly be completely wrong. Um, I'm not even entirely sure if it's actually actually a Chinese studio, but I I should probably probably check real quick uh okay yeah they're they're based in hong kong um so yeah um now this is one of those games very similar to black myth wukong where it kind of looks too good to be true where the animations it's like okay th this looks so orchestrated that it's hard to believe that this is the type of these are the type of moves and executions that the player is actually going to be doing in game. Um, some of the moves just look like you're not actually manually doing them. They, they could be, it could be like counter moves. It, it could be uh, like you press a button and depending on the situation, your character does a certain move. It, it, it could be something like that. But the, the animations and, and the fighting was just, the, the choreography of it was just so elaborate. It's it was hard to believe like this is real and actual gameplay. You know, a lot I, I felt the same way about Black Myth. But yeah, it, this this does look great. If the game is actually what they showed, it does look great. But sometimes a lot of this shit is just it's it's kind of pie in the sky, and they use like these trailers for um just to build hype and to advertise for the game and um and to attract more talent to even develop on the game. So, I don't know. We'll see. No release date. Sword of the Sea, um, that's like the journey um, sandboarding game. 
this journey was cool, but you know, like I said, I also I if it's not already clear, I watch these these showcases mainly for like triple A games. Like indies are cool and that other stuff is cool, but once again, the main course is supposed to be the first party triple A games. Uh the Talos principle, never played the first one, don't care about this. Um never that's another indie game coming in 2024 made by the creators of Gris. Don't care about it. Foam Stars is, is, is Square Enix's very, very poor attempt at a at a, uh, a Splatoon clone. Don't care about it. It's not even because it's a. It, it's not even because it's like a Splatoon clone though. It, it, that's not even. I don't think that's even the worst part about it. I think the worst part about it is like. It looks so so just corny and lame and generic. Like Splatoon just looks like this 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 is this is the Foam Stars looks like the multi meal version of Splatoon. Like it's like you take the concept, but the but and you make your own game, but it doesn't look better. If you if you can copy a, a game's concept and make it better, just then, then I'm not that mad at that, but this looks lame, and this look it, it just looks corny. It it just looks very factory made, like assembly line type of game, where there it, it, there's no real like inspiration. <laughs> there's no real inspiration behind it aside from oh, make something like Splatoon. It's just very uninspired and and just. Like you, you listen, Square. Like I said yesterday, Square Enix is kind of like Japanese Ubisoft, kinda. Had they're ha, they're like halfway or seventy five, almost seventy five percent, uh, on their way to being Japanese Ubisoft, where the games have no soul, where where it's just games made on a factory assembly line, and you just like everybody and and a whole bunch of people are just putting the parts together, but nobody really has any care for it or any. There's no soul or. I, de- you know, it, it's, um, I don't care. The Plucky Squire, this is like a 2D, yeah, the 2D, 3D game. It, this looks good. Uh, the gameplay of this looked good. We saw this before. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about Plucky Squire. It, it looked good. Teardown is like that Minecraft style game. Yeah, um, I don't care. I don't like Minecraft. Couldn't give a damn about it. Uh, so not much to say about that. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. So this is confirmation for the for the remake. Once again, no gameplay. They also announced uh the collection that comes the collection is coming to PS5 and I guess Xbox. Um Metal Gear Solid 1, 2 and and 3, the original ones. I believe it's coming to PS5, probably Xbox. Uh because like I think 85% of the games 85% of the games that were shown at this showcase are are multiplats. It might be ninety percent. So now marketing has a lot of power. So showing having showing these at the PlayStation Showcase will have the uh, the the intended effect that they wanted it to have. That and and we hear it all the time, even from hardcore gamers. You hear about oh I thought this game was only on on PlayStation because that and that sometimes that comes from hardcore gamers it it especially works on casuals who they see a commercial or an advertisement for something being on a certain platform and they literally think it's exclusive to that a lot of them believe it those games are exclusive uh, there has been a bunch of stories about casuals they thought Ho- Hogwarts Legacy was was exclusive. Um, because PlayStation had marketing rights to that, so this is these these are going to have the same intended effect, and we see that in the, in the software sales, um, the software sales split. When you see like it be like eighty percent of this this game's total sales were on PlayStation, and the rest were you know uh, where everywhere everywhere else it was distributed. So it's going to have the intended effect, but bro, it's like once again, this is a this makes it a third party showcase. I'm not like once again. I'm not giving you points for for shit that I kind of would have seen otherwise, or or is available other places. It's like no. Uh, then they showed Final Fantasy 16 again. Um, listen, this 
Final Fantasy 16 is this year's death loop because it's been massively over advertised. Anybody who was gonna buy Final Fantasy has already decided to buy it already. You adding this trailer is like wasn't gonna do anything. Isn't isn't gonna do anything. So it's like, bro, why? Why did you even add, add this? I did not want to see this game. There was just another like preview uh, press blowout, literally the day before this this showcase, where you got to see like people talk about like their four their four hour uh, experience with Final Fantasy. Like I I know y'all want this game to sell, but like and and Square Square needs to make less games. I keep saying this. They need to make less games. That is their problem. Stop this factory, th th this factory assembly game release and, and game design um, philosophy where it's like any idea that comes to you, you're like, okay, let's green light that. Make less games and focus on those few games to make, sh make those like the heavy hitters rather than just making anything that comes to y'all mind. Like it's, it's, it sucks. Alan Wake 2. So this was probably one of the best trailers, I think, at, at this show. I, I think this is one of the best ones. Um, because I, I really like the tone, the atmosphere. Um, I, I, and I'm a big Remedy fan. And listen, I'm glad to see that there's a black uh, female protagonist. And you're actually, I'm, I'm actually excited about the fact that you're going you're gonna to get to play from multiple perspectives. I think I'm like... I think games that do that, especially, you know, with horror, I don't know. I, I think that's kind of, that, that's something that I'm starting to welcome more. When uh, games that uh, give you multiple perspectives and you play for multiple characters, I, I, I kind of like that. Um, so this new black female protagonist, you know, she looks cool. And, and, and yeah, like, because we get a lot of black protagonists in games that I feel suck or are going to suck, right? So I feel like this is very safe. This is a very safe game that we can be confident in that has a black protagonist and is also going to be good because usually it, it ends up the opposite way, right? That for some reason, the games that they decide to put a black protagonist in those games also end up sucking. It has nothing to do with the black protagonist, the, the protagonist being black. But for some reason, the games that suck, those are the games that, that they tend to, oh, yeah, let's use a black protagonist for our mid game. No. Like, I, I want to see more developers who are making absolute bangers that we know would make absolute bangers use black protagonists, not these experimental developers who are making average games. Um, so yeah, this trailer looked, this trailer looked really good, and you know the problem with Alan, Alan Wake, um, I, I I guess the weakest part the, the, of the first one was it's like it's gameplay like you kind of got tired of shooting shooting shadows. It just felt very <clears throat> I don't know disconnected. Um, even though I, I do like the gameplay, I, I think you needed a, a a way to make shooting these shadow monsters just a, a little bit more visceral, a little bit more um, impactful. And I think they're going to do that based, based on this trailer. It looks like they're going to do that. It's, it's going to play more like a horror game like they, like they promised. So, uh, yeah, um, this is definitely one of the best trailers, best announcements of this show. Assassin, and that's coming out October 17th. I'm not sure I entirely believe in that um, release date. Uh, I think that that might get delayed. I know they want to probably want to keep it in October because of the tone of the game. It's a scary game, you know uh Halloween and all that shit October um but yeah um I think that game might de get delayed Assassin's Creed Mirage which comes out 5 days before Alan Wake I'm very excited for this game this might be the the, the game that I'm excited for a, probably yeah probably more than than Alan Wake um because I've been waiting for Assassin's Creed to return back to form for a very long time I hate what Assassin's Creed has become this RPG dog shit where you have to be like where it's more about levels and leveling up to take on um, to take on enemies rather than it being a stealth game like you can't tell me this is Assassin's Creed and it's about stealth and assassination and you actually being able to 
use stealth mechanics to find out, you know, uh, to weave your way through challenges to assassinate characters when you have to be a certain level to assassinate characters. That's just that just doesn't go together. It's 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 an oxymoron. It it, it contradicts itself. So. I hate the new Assassin's Creed, and being that this is a, a return to you know the classic way of playing it, I'm, extre- I'm extremely excited, very excited for this. And I hope going forward, I know they're still going to make their RPG Assassin's Creeds, but I also, but I hope they also still make the classic, um, the classic ones also, like Mirage is going to be. So I'm very excited about this. Um. Next was Revenant Hill. I honestly don't even remember what what that was. Let me see. I really don't remember what that even was. Oh, it's that indie looking game. Don't care. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy. Never really been into Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, So no opinions on that. Street Fighter. Street Fighter is another game that's been shown to death. Like PlayStation, all of these games are going to sell so much better on your platform anyway. You own Evo. Um, you know, you, P- Street Fighter V was exclusive to PlayStation. Play- fighting games have always sold better on PlayStation. You're damn, like, I, trust me, the majority of people are going to buy this on PlayStation anyway. That's how it's, that's how it's going to go. Um, because all fighting games, because with PlayStation owning Evo and, and all of these games being all of these games are, are, are cross um, or cross play anyway. So people are just going to doesn't matter what platform you buy, it, you know, because before you had to worry about that. And people would uh, buy it on PlayStation solely because you knew that was the bigger player pool. But now with games like, you know, cross play um, games, these games have cr- fighting games have cross play. People don't have to worry about that, but they're already like conditioned to buying fighting games on PlayStation anyway. Uh, PlayStation is, you know, owns Evo, the biggest fighting game tournament. So, and and fighting games are at like the <laughs> seems to be at like I guess some people are calling it a renaissance or 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 a return to the golden age because Tekken Eight, Street Fighter Six, Mortal Kombat, all at the same time. Yeah, um, Ultros, some side scrolling. Uh, melee game, don't remember it. Tower of Fantasy, don't remember it. Dragon's Dogma. Um, this this this. This might be a game that I'm maybe interested in, um, but I never played. I, I vaguely remember the first one, but I did not play the first one. Um, so the last one came out like a decade ago. This is the sequel being made in RE Engine. Seems like a like a decent RPG, but no no real thoughts on it. Honestly, like you know. Um, Look, it looks okay. It looks okay. Um, I I got to see more. Uh, it's it's something that I would potentially be interested in. Something that I might pick up. I I got to see. Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't care about Five Nights at Five Nights at Freddy's. Is one of those games that PC gamers bought to relevance. And it, this this is a game that gets way too much attention way too much notoriety for like what it is i'm like i don't it, it's such like a like a cult type support that it gets and it's just like it's just one of those games that pc dudes like hype up and and, and have made um made relevant when it shouldn't be as relevant as it is like getting a movie it had i think this is i think this is also like of the vr version um yeah, I think this is a VR game, but yeah, I hate PC gamers that they've made this this mid franchise and mid game uh, relevant. They even have a movie now, which is t- ridiculous to me. Uh, Resident Evil Four Remake gets coming to PSVR two. Arizona Sunshine. I don't even remember what that looked like, but I'm probably not interested. Uh, So, but you know, and I and I play VSVR two, of course. So I will try that in 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 PSVR two. Crossfire Sierra Squad. I'm not playing nothing with Crossfire in the title. That Synapse game. I will play that Synapse game. That looks pretty good. And of course, I'm playing uh, Beat Saber, which they've been talking for a while about when it's coming out. But wait, but when? But they didn't give a release date. One of our VR favorites is back today. Oh, it's out now. 
Oh, okay. I see. I didn't. I didn't know. I, I must have missed that. Um. So they've actually released Beat Saber now. Okay, I gotta go buy that. Marathon. Marathon is a game by Bungie. Um, it's 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 a game that they're bringing back because it was one of their original games like way back in the day that they put on Mac OS but i really have no it's a shooter but i really have no thoughts on this um was this even actual gameplay i don't think it was <coughs> um no this looks like some in engine shit but not actual gameplay that doesn't tell us anything i'm telling you the 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 science and the art of good CG trailers are are dead, because a lot of these trailers are just some some artsy abstract bullshit that don't tell you nothing about nothing. So and this is why I didn't get excited about the acquisition of Bungie because I was like I hate Destiny, and I don't know what they're gonna make next. They can make something that I'm completely uninterested in. And it's, it's once again, it's too soon to tell for this marathon game because I got to see actual gameplay, but there's no indications that tell me with marathon or, or fair game that I'm going to be excited for those. Not my style of uh, multiplayer games and shooters, but we'll, we'll see. Destiny 2 uh, has an expansion called The Final Shape coming. Um, I don't know if this means it's going to be the final expansion for Destiny 2. Maybe. Either way, I don't care. Um, Concord. So this is Firewalk, a first-party studio. Um, it's th their new IP coming to PS5 and, and PC. Uh, science fiction game in space. I don't, I don't know if there's any other details besides that. Uh, it's the first original AAA project from Firewalk Studios. It's a PvP multiplayer game set in science fiction universe. See, like, if it, it with this stuff being PvP, bro, you gotta, like, CG trailers are especially useless, just especially for, like, multiplayer PvP games, because you literally need, need to judge it off gameplay. Like, single-player games that or, or sequels, you know, those are more, uh, CG trailers are, are more useful in that scenario, but not this. This doesn't do nothing. They showed off the Gran Turismo. Showing off a movie, I get, I get you got to advertise it, and, like, they're making this push for, for movies because it's been uh, successful for them so far. But showing the Gran Turismo trailer at a PlayStation showcase is just... That's that's just sick behavior. Like that is that's nasty work. That is nasty work, bro. Like that that's sick behavior. Project Q. So I was so upset by this point. I didn't even like look at this Project Q handheld and, and the earbuds and all that stuff. And listen, I'm not once again, none of this stuff is bad. And it's the same thing we've always always said. None of this stuff is bad if you show games that people want to see that come from you. None of this stuff is bad. But without those things, everything else is bad. So they showed off the, the you know the PlayStation earbuds, and uh, they they still don't have an official name for this for this remote play device. It's still called Project Q. Um, Maybe it's coming out later this year. Don't know. Yeah, really no thought. No, no thoughts on. Uh, really no thoughts on it. Um, and then they ended with Spider Man's Who. We you know we saw the lizard Craven. Craven Craven Hunter looks great. I mean that's a fantastic uh, villain to add. Uh, we saw Peter in, in in the Venom suit. Some people were talking about how the Venom suit looks. Uh, some people are used to the look where. The Venom suit is like a flat actual suit, um, like like it looked in Spider Man, uh, Spider Man Three, the movie, or other uh, even other depictions of of, uh, of the Venom suit on Spider Man looked more solid. People like that kind of sleek and clean look, and so some people were complaining that it looks like a symbiote 
that is just on top of his suit. And some people don't like that. It, it looks oily and muddy, and that's kind of accurate to how it should look. But people like the sleeker look. And I can absolutely understand that. You know, he kind of looks, it, the, the symbiote over him just looks globby and, and, and muddy, which, I mean, it looks like that on Venom. So it makes sense that it looks like that on Spider-Man, but people, um, people, you know, don't like the look on Spider-Man. They like it when it's like weaved. It looks like it's weaved into the suit because it does look cooler that way. It does. Um, but they went with uh, they went with this look. Um, and the gameplay, the, you know, the gameplay was very. They showed off some combat. He, I think, it start, he started off in Queens. Um, they got, we got to see how we're going to be switching between Miles and, and Peter on missions. Um, it seems like you're going to be, uh, you're going to get prompts when you're on a mission to switch between Miles and Peter. When you're in free roam, not on a mission, you're most likely going to be able to switch between Miles and Peter anytime you want. Um, they, they they always show these like very elaborate set pieces when it, when it, at you know, in these trailers, which this this set piece was very grand and reminded me of like that Uncharted Four, uh, the the Uncharted Four set piece when when we saw it, and um, it, it's cool, but like, I was it's just that I feel like I was already like I already knew what I was getting with Spider Man. So I I was more excited to to see like other things. So it's not that I'm not excited about Spider Man. I was just more excited to see other things. So that, that's kind of my problem with that. But Spider Man Two looks great. Looks looks fantastic. I I have, you know, um, they they got wings. They got they got the webbed wings wings on on their suit now. Um, some new powers it seems. New new combos like. Like Spider, like uh, when he was fighting some goons, he 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 did like an OTG on one of these enemies. He knocked them to the ground and they bounced back up. Like there's so there's some new combo potential there and some new moves and mechanics and and, and stuff like that that we're gonna we're gonna have. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we'll see more in a state of play and a deep dive in, in in the future and all and all that all that jazz. One of the one of the small Easter eggs, uh, in the trailer was um. When Craven, when one of his goons was showing Craven uh, some uh, potential victims to hunt, because he's always, you know, looking for a challenge. One of them that we saw was uh, Wraith, um, and the detective. Uh, well, I forgot her name. Um, from the first game, she actually becomes like kind of like an antihero. I wouldn't say she's a villain, but she kind of becomes an antihero. And uh, who else was on that that screen? I think Peter's uncle. Um, I think he, he was on there because you know who he becomes and, uh, yeah, other people who are in New York and in the Spider-Man universe are going to be, uh, potential people for Craven to hunt. So yeah, this, that was the, um, that was the showcase. I think the showcase, I, I still think it's like worse than it, it. It's worse and more insulting than the previous one a year and like eight months ago because of the, and, and some people say, oh, they didn't say any of this stuff. That's your expectations set you up. No, no, no. Some, some of this stuff, listen, some of this, some of the stuff should have been shown. And even if you say we set ourselves up for expectations, this is a first party showcase. That's what it's supposed to be. We didn't really see first party we still don't know what's going on with first party for the most most part we we entered this show very uninformed and ignorant and we left pretty uninformed and ignorant we don't know that much more than than before so i don't care what our expectations were we didn't get that phase 2 of what playstation First party is doing. We didn't get that phase two. We didn't get it. And and like my my thing is like See, you, you could probably make the excuse uh, the a sol solid reasoning that okay, the reason they haven't shown this stuff is because they don't want to show stuff too far in advance and when it's not ready. That may be true. 
But at the same time, you showed CG trailers for like three games. So if you can, sh- I think if you can show CG trailers for three games, you could you could definitely show CG trailers for that other shit. Because it's not like you gave release dates on 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 even the stuff that you did show. So if you can do it for these games, you you could do it for for shit that might even be a little bit farther out. So that, that excuse doesn't really fly with me. You like if you could do a title screen or a CG for for this, then you could do it for a game that's a little bit further out. And I I just I just don't believe that that these other games that they didn't show are that farther out. I just, I just don't believe that. Like the timing just doesn't make sense. That like that some of these games are two years away. I do not believe that some of these games are two years away. I, I don't believe that. So I I just don't get it. Um. Let me just check to see if I missed anything. <coughs> that uh, Ultros is the colorful Metroidvania game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cat Quest, Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know if I mentioned that. Huh, how insulting. I think I got a little cold. That trash-ass uh, conference uh, showcase made me sick. It was so bad. Gave me a sickness. Mm. So yeah, um, listen, that's. I think that's it. That's all I I really have to say. This, you know, and once again, one of the other factor that made it bad is we waited a year and eight months. You have to factor that in. That wait absolutely demands more than this. Doesn't matter what our expectations were. That that weight that weight demanded more than this. The fact that it's a PlayStation showcase demanded more than this. Like, we we gotta let our standards be known. And I'm glad, like, on Twitter, even even like the 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 diehards that um, I see that have like praised PlayStation. Uh, like that previous PlayStation showcase that I hated, even th- I see them saying this this showcase was not it, and I think I think that's important because we need to clearly let that be known that this shit was not it. So um, yeah, we we need to make that shit be loud and clear because uh, this is ex- unacceptable and um. Now I'm just like I'm I'm just like not even thinking about okay, when are these things actually coming anymore? I'm not even gonna think about it, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna play the games that I have right now, play the games I have in front of, in front of me that are out that I plan that I plan to play, and I'm not even thinking about this shit no more. Because what's the point at this point? Like if if like it was so clear to me that they were gonna show this at, show some shit after a year and eight months, but if you if you're not showing it here, when are you gonna show it? So I'm not about to like be I'm just not about to be playing this guessing game of when we gonna see shit, when shit gonna appear, and like I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm gonna remove it from my thoughts, remove it from my brain. And when it when it sh- when it pops up, it pops up. I'm not gonna be guessing like, oh no, it's gonna be here. No, no, it's gonna be. Nope. I don't. It doesn't exist to me. Until it's shown, it doesn't exist to me. I I I don't know anything about it. Never heard of it. I'm completely just uh, you know removing it uh, from from my brain. I have no knowledge of it. Never heard of it. So that's that's how I'm I'm moving forward. So. Um, appreciate y'all watching. Um, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Check out the last, you know, the few videos we we did, the live reaction, um, the the podcast, and all that good shit. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the notification bell. Shout out to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Um, Weapon Wheel is growing, you know, tremendously, and all that shit. Discord is is bigger than ever. Shit is popping. So shout out to all y'all for y'all support, and um. I'm going to catch y'all on the next video, whenever that's going to be. Going back to these games. All right, peace.